Today I'm going to show you how you can self-host any den for completely free. Now this also addresses two common issues I see a lot when self-hosting any den, is that you cannot access things online, such as webhooks, and that when we close out of our tab, it does not actually save all the workflows and credentials and all of the hard work that we've actually done. So I'm going to show you how we can fix both of these while self-hosting any den for completely free. So we're going to start by doing is we're going to look up Docker in a den. And then we're going to scroll down to the Docker hub here where we have the any den Docker image. So we're going to click on this and it'll open up a page that looks like this. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to look up a site called render. So it's going to be render.com. You can see this is what it looks like. So you're going to want to create an account here. So I'm just going to log in. And then what we want to do is we're going to add a project. So I'm going to click add. And then we're going to add a web service. And then what we want to do here is we're going to actually select existing image. So for this image URL, we're going to go back over to that Docker page that we just opened. And we're just going to, co uh, going to copy this title right here at the top. So we'll copy that, the NADEN uh, IO slash NADEN. And you can see we get a check mark over here. And then we're just going to select connect. So I'll give that a name. I'm just going to name it NADEN demo. You can just name it NADEN if you want. And then we can scroll down. And then I'm going to select free here, as that is what I promised is, is going to be completely free. And then we can just like deploy the web service here at the bottom. So you can see it is now deploying. So once that's done, you can see it has been uh, set to live now. And what that means is we can click on this. I'll open a new tab here. Sometimes it does take a minute. You can probably see that it was could not get um, what I just opened. So I just refreshed it a couple of times and then you can see it now loaded. Uh, so we can set up our account. So I'm just gonna enter everything for this account. And you can click this box if you like. I'm just gonna select next. You can enter some of this information click just get started and then you can get some of this uh, these extra features so you can do that just by selecting uh, send me a free license key that'll just send you an email with a code and you can copy that code or just activate it through the email so pretty neat uh, I'll do this really quick just to so show you what it looks like so you can see it's on the way to my email and then the email will look something like this. You can copy the code and go back to uh, NADEN or you can just select activate the license. Okay, I'm just gonna copy the code, I was not working. So I'm gonna copy that and then we can go to settings I think. And then we go to usage and plan. And then you can see we can enter an activation key and that's where we'll paste that key that we just got in the email. So we can click activate. You can see our license is now activated. And if we go back, you can see we now get access to folders here, which is very helpful when organizing all of our different workflows. And there were some other things in there as well. So you can now connect your credentials as usual, create workflows as usual, and yeah, create different folders as well. And one of the nice things about self-hosting is that you do get access to the community nodes. So to get uh, those, we're gonna go down to this menu here, select the settings, and then we can go all the way to the bottom where it says community nodes. You're just gonna click install, enter the name of the package, so any dan dash nodes, and then dash whatever the community node you're installing is. These are all listed on GitHub. And then we just click understand and install that node so whatever you're looking to install, you could do it that way. 
So I'm gonna go back to the overview here. So once we've done that, what will happen is if I close out of this tab and come back in, we're gonna have to re-log in and that will not save any of these workflows. So I'll make an example of a workflow really quickly. Put something in here so you can see that it actually saves. So right now, anything that we actually do inside of AnyDen is not going to be saved. And to fix that, we're going to open up a new tab and go to Supabase. I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to log in, or you can create your account. Again, all of this is free. So once you're logged into your account on Supabase, we need to create a project. So I'm going to select create new project, select the organization, and then we can give this project a name. So I'm going to do in it in self-hosted demo. You can give it a password here. So when you're creating this project, you'll actually want to copy or at least remember the password that you just used to make the database. So I'll give it a password and then we'll do create a new project at the bottom. You could change some options here. I'm just going to leave them all as they already are. Create new project. So then what we want to do, once we've created that project inside of Supabase, we then need to fill out a document. So I'll link these, uh, all of this down below in the description. So you can just copy this, uh, just write it down somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Um, we just need to fill in all of these pieces of information for the Supabase project, which is around here, the encryption key, which I'll show you how to get, plug in your time zone here, and then we're going to get this information from uh, render. So we're going to fill in this from Supabase. Some of this I'll already uh, leave filled in. So we're using a Postgres database. It'll be set to public automatically. And then the database host, I'll show you how to get all of this information. So these uh, three. Uh, before we copy and paste anything else, since you already have that project password copied, or if you don't, write down the password that you just used to make the project inside of Supabase. So again, that's the password for the actual project, not your Supabase account. So the project password goes there, and then I'll show you to get these three. So inside of Supabase, we're going to go to the top here and select this connect button. We're then going to scroll down and under this transaction pooler section right here, we're going to select this drop down to view the parameters. Now here we can see the host. So I'll copy this and we can paste that in this host section. I'll copy the port, paste that in the port section, the user, which we can copy from there. And you can see that database is also listed in there as Postgres. And then the password, again, you'll get from whenever you just created the project. So now that we have those, we then need to get the encryption key. So the encryption key, we can literally just look up encryption key generator. Uh, I just used this acetate, I don't even know how to say this, whatever this website is, but you can click generate and then we'll go copy this encryption key for 256. So we'll copy that and we can go back to our notes here, paste that there. And then all we have left is this information from render. So if we go back to render, we're just gonna copy on this link right here that we just used to actually open our NADN uh, self-hosted instance. So I'm gonna copy that, and then we can go back to our note here, and we're gonna paste that URL for both the webhook URL right there, and then the editor base URL. So it should look something like this. Whatever URL is listed here will be for the base and the webhook URL. Then for the protocol, this is going to be HTTPS. 
which will automatically be filled in, and then the port is default to 443. Now we need the entity in host, which we're just going to copy the back half of that URL. So anything after the double forward slash, so any in and then whatever else is after that. So you can see uh, this section right here that I've uh, selected. You're going to copy that and paste that under the in in host. So now what we need to do, I'm going to get my password really quickly. So once you've gotten everything filled in on this note uh, page here, we're going to go back to render. And then what we can do is go over on the left side here, select environment. Now we actually need to add all of these as environment variables. Now what I would recommend doing is just selecting this drop down, selecting from the dot environment uh, dot env, and we're going to do copy all of this and paste it on uh, that field right there. So I actually don't know if you have to have them with no spaces, but I just had all of the equal signs with no spaces. That might not affect it, but that's what I did and it worked. So you don't have to, I'm just gonna delete these uh, lines there just in case it messes with anything. And now we can select add the variables and you can see that those are filled in all the variables there. So then what we need to do is we can click save and deploy here at the bottom. You can see we get that green check mark there and all of those are kind of grayed out and it hides the value. And then what we need to do is I can close out of this, but what we can do is open this up again So yeah, that is how you set up uh, NADN to self-host uh, for completely free and save all of your workflows, credentials, everything. So it's there the next time you log back in. So just as a reminder, we went over to Docker, copied that image from Docker, created a web service inside of Render for our self-hosting for NADN. And then we created a Superbase project to store our project in so we don't have to reconnect recreate or reconnect everything every time we go into any done. So if you have any questions, drop a comment below. And if you got anything from this video, leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. Have a good one.